you should learn to configure the compressor effect well. It is one of the important effects to achieve the technical requirements of an audio recording. Let me show you which technical requirement the compressor effect modifies. The recording you see on the screen is a raw recording. I have not added any audio processing to it yet. I can see the ACX values for the current recording from the ACX check. You already know that the ACX check shows three parameters of ACX audiobook requirements. The compressor effect can modify the RMS level of the audio. The RMS level is here, and it is lower than the required value. You can see that the peak is also low than the required value. If I increase the peak level, the RMS level and noise floor will also increase. You should note this point. All three parameters in this ACX check have a linear relation. If you increase the value of one metric, the value of the other two metrics will also increase. If you decrease the value of one metric, the value of the other two metrics will decrease. If you understand this relationship, audio editing will become easier for you. If you are wondering what the RMS level actually indicates, it indicates the average loudness of the audio. If the RMS level increases, the audio will be perceived as louder. The job of a compressor is to increase the RMS level without increasing the peak level. Let me show that in detail. The first step before applying the compressor is to fix the peak level. The current audio has a peak level of minus 10, and it should be minus 3 dB. We can do that using the normalize effect. I will go to the normalize effect and set the peak as minus 3. The normalize effect is already configured as minus 3 dB and I will apply this settings. If you had a different value set in the peak amplitude, set it to as minus 3 dB and apply. The normalize effect is applied. We can check the ACX check values to confirm the peak level. You can see the peak level is now minus 3, and the RMS level is minus 20.73. For this tutorial, ignore the noise floor. We will only focus on the RMS level with respect to the peak. The compressor effect aims to increase the RMS level without increasing the peak level. After applying the compressor, we will set the peak to minus 3 dB again. You will see the RMS level will increase at that time. Please note that the RMS level is minus 20.73 dB now. We will apply the compressor effect now, and later, this reading will be compared. I will close this and open the compressor effect. Please note that the compressor effect has a totally new algorithm in Audacity 3.6. If you learned the compressor effect in previous Audacity versions, you have to adjust the concepts according to this new compressor. You can see the compressor configuration window. The compression amount is set by threshold and ratio. The colored graph on the right side shows the compression nature. I will return to the default compressor settings. The default compressor settings will not work well for a voiceover, but I am going back to the default settings so that you know which values you have to adjust for the voiceover. I have an Audacity course bundle to upgrade your audio editing skill level for professional work. By professional works, I mean audiobook narration, professional voice acting, content creation, online video trainings or any kind of generic voiceover task. The bundle has a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you feel the courses are not working for you, you can ask for a 100% refund within 30 days. No questions will be asked. In addition to the money-back guarantee, you will also get another guarantee. It is a success guarantee. If you cannot achieve your voice editing goal like audiobook narration or preparing demos for voiceovers, I would personally guide you for success. You will email me your issues and I will send you solutions. The solutions will be in form of emails, video instructions, and even video calls if needed. So the guarantee covers both financially and helps you achieve your goals. You will find links to enroll in the Audacity course bundle in the description and pinned comment. In theory, the compressor effects reduce the dynamic range. Dynamic range means the volume gap between the loudest and quietest talks. A compressor reduces the volume gap, thus every part of the audio can be heard clearly and comfortably. The threshold level defines when the compressor will be active. If audio levels go beyond the threshold level, the compressor starts its work. It starts compressing the louder sounds, and the gap between louder and softer talks decreases. You can see the line has a different slope at this point. This is the threshold point. If I move the threshold slider, you will see the point will move accordingly. You can see the point is moving as I adjust the threshold. There is no right value for the threshold. It depends on the recording you are working with. I will give you an easy formula in a moment. Before that, let's see what happens if I move the ratio slider. The ratio is closely tied to the threshold. When your audio signal or level crosses the threshold, the ratio defines the amount of compression. The more ratio you set, the more compressed the audio will become. You can see the more ratio I set, the flatter the line becomes after the threshold point. 
There are other important settings in the compressor, such as attack and release. Attack means how soon the compressor will become active if the audio signal crosses the threshold level. Release means when the compressor becomes inactive if the audio signal is below the threshold level. All these talks seem a bit technical, but without proper confirmation of these, the compression will do nothing. The default compression settings are not ideal for voiceovers. You should use a preset so that most of the settings work well. From factory presets, use lead vocals. Please note that, before applying the compressor, you should make sure the peak level is minus 3 dB. If the peak level is way below minus 3 dB, the settings I am going to show you may not work. I will choose lead vocals. I will keep the threshold to minus 14 dB. If my audio had a large difference in the loudest and quietest parts, I would have needed to lower the threshold like minus 18 or minus 20 dB. The voiceover I am working with is already pretty consistent, so minus 14 will work okay for me. If you have an okay voiceover, and you set the peak to minus 3 dB before applying the compressor, a threshold of minus 14 to minus 18 will work okay. The next thing I will configure is the ratio. The ideal value of the ratio should be between 2 to 4. If you need more compression use a higher value like 4. The RMS level before the compression indicates how much compression you need. I already had a RMS level of minus 20 before compression. If you know the ACX range for RMS, it is from minus 18 to minus 23. That means this audio is already in the ACX accepted range for RMS. I do not need heavy compression, a moderate amount of compression will do. In fact, compression was not needed for this audio as the RMS was in the ACX accepted range. However, I am applying the compressor effect to show you how it can increase the RMS level. I will set the ratio to 3 and keep the attack and release slider in its current position. The lead vocal preset sets these values so that they would be effective for most voiceovers. I will apply these compressor settings. The compressor is applied, and you see the waveform changed after the compressor effect. I will go to the ACX check now. Please note that the compressor will change the peak level. We can see the peak is not minus 3 after applying the compressor. The compressor adjusts the peak, and we can get back the minus 3 dB peak by applying a normalize effect. I will apply the normalize effect. If you have noticed, I am applying a normalize effect before and after the compressor. This technique of applying the compressor is called the compression sandwich technique. The compression sandwich technique helps to achieve both the peak and RMS levels according to ACX standards. I will apply this minus 3 dB peak. I will go to the ACX check again. You can see the peak is now minus 3 dB, and the RMS is minus 18.14 dB. Before applying the compressor, the RMS was minus 20.73. That means, after applying the compressor, the RMS level increased even though we set the peak level to minus 3 at both times. I hope you now understand how the new compressor effect of Audacity 3.6 works. I have an Audacity course bundle to upgrade your audio editing skill level for professional work. By professional works, I mean audiobook narration, professional voice acting, content creation, online video trainings or any kind of generic voiceover task. The bundle has a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you feel the courses are not working for you, you can ask for a 100% refund within 30 days. No questions will be asked. In addition to the money-back guarantee, you will also get another guarantee. It is a success guarantee. If you cannot achieve your voice editing goal like audiobook narration or preparing demos for voiceovers, I would personally guide you for success. You will email me your issues and I will send you solutions. The solutions will be in form of emails, video instructions, and even video calls if needed. So the guarantee covers both financially and helps you achieve your goals. You will find links to enroll in the Audacity course bundle in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching.